trivia. Hey, what's going on, guys? There you are. <laughs> Sorry, uh, am I late or am I right on time? You're right on time. Okay. How's it going? So, so do I have the honors of uh, hosting? You have the honors of hosting. I need a break. I need to go pop in and out, have some lunch or something. But uh, we've had some decent people viewing so far. We've, we've peaked around like 85 viewers. So um, now we're down to 70 now that trivia is over. People, people were here just for the fun. And apparently our fun and fungibility shirts aren't enough to keep people around for these, uh, for these, these coffee chats. But, uh, you know, it's always fun. So, sorry. Take it away, Doug. This is your thing. We got Ricardo. How's it going? Hello. Have you been in, on uh, other events today, or is this uh, is this your first Moneroversary event? Uh, uh, previous years I've been on, but this is my first one for today. Oh, I know previous years, of course. How's everybody doing? And I uh, so South Africa has been on lockdown for like a month, uh, and as part of the lockdown, you're not allowed to buy alcohol. I don't know why, but that's the law, and so I couldn't get a bottle of Barolo. So instead, uh, I got a bottle of 2014 La Riche Cabernet Sauvignon. And I figured like 2014, you know, Year of Monero, it's the closest I'm going to get to having a Barolo in you and the Dev's honor. That sounds good. What's going what's gonna to be the Tari wine? What's going to be the... Uh... You'll have to come up with a new one for that. Yeah, we're going to have to think about that one. Someone's going to have to like just wreck IRC one day. And, you know, that's the, that, that's the tradition. It's the only way. Do we have any uh, Tari updates? Is there anything uh, coming down the pipe? Um, I mean, like, code is coming down thick and fast. And uh, I think, I don't know if anyone's been playing around with it or try to compile it or anything, but um, things looking, it's looking pretty good, at least, like, the base notes. Um. I'd suggest that like, if you haven't yet, then it's worth playing around with it. Uh, I think we, uh, I'm not going to, I mean, I'm not going to commit to anything that's like up to the community, but I think we're getting pretty close to a testnet launch, um, at least on the, the, the base node, uh, base layer stuff. So yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. That's exciting. So I guess, uh, actually, I guess we should uh, go around and all introduce ourselves since it is a, a coffee chat. We don't know who's going to be tuning in right now. Uh, you guys want to go around? I guess, Ricardo, you want to start? Sure. So I'm Ricardo Spagni. You may know me as Fluffy Pony. I used to be the lead maintainer of Monero. <laughs> and as was just demonstrated, everyone knows, or at least most people know that I'm no longer uh, the lead maintainer, but I'm still involved with the Monero community. I still love Monero. I still spend a lot of time on Monero. Um, and uh, over the past um, year and a half or so, I've been working on a project called Tari, which is a digital assets protocol that is built on top of Monero. Very cool. Diego, you want to jump in? Yeah, uh, I'm Diego. I gave the history of Monero earlier. I uh, do work for the core team because they're too lazy to do work for themselves. So I do it on their behalf. And... Uh, well, your name uh, sounds similar to that guy who was on the leaderboard for the trivia night. The Diego Salad Bar. He's a close relative of mine, <laughs> um, but <laughs> he doesn't have the name <laughs> of Salazar, unfortunately. So um, happy to be here. Happy to talk. I do have to go grab some breakfast at some point. I'm very hungry, but I'll stick around and answer all Diego-related questions as they come for the next while. Oh, also, this this coffee chat is less important than the meme competition that's immediately after. So you can't be bailing on the meme competition. So get get that in now. Okay. Arctic Vine, want to give your intro? Oh, you're on mute. Everyone starts muted. No, I don't think he is muted, though. He's just, it's just not hooked up. Oh, there we go. All right. Am I on now? Yes, we can hear you. Good. It's uh, Francisco Cabanas, uh, otherwise known as Arctic Mine, and I've been involved with Monero since, I guess, 2014, and in the core team since 2016, and then I do things around scaling aspects of Monero. 
Very cool. Yeah. Uh, need money, you there? <clears throat> All right. I heard somebody clearing their throat. Need money. You want to introduce yourself? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. VT Nerd. Yeah, so this is VT Nerd, um, also known as Lee. I've been contributing to Monero for like ooh, three and a half years, something like that. So kind of all over the code base from wallet stuff to back end my Monero stuff to a lot of networking stuff recently. So pretty much any of the networking code breaks, it's probably my fault, unfortunately. But yeah, <laughs> that's it. NSA Van. Oh, uh, the NSA yeah. van is my other computer that is cap. The, the NSA van yeah. is my computer that's capturing this and sending it to YouTube. So uh, I am the NSA van, and I'm also nice. Justin. I was all excited to, uh, to meet NSA van. Wait, Justin, you're you looking at NSA van is, all is this on? Is this working? My network dropped off. Yeah. Uh, Doug, you're back. Um, I'm going to do the need money back. Money, you want to? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I need money. Ninety. I'm a moderator in the community and help out with various facets of community building when I can. Uh, hello. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. And uh, yeah, Justin, who's normally the host of this okay. show, he does a much better job. The whole reason I had you host is because I just wanted someone to finally introduce me. That's the real reason. It's, it's This show should obviously all be about me. So as a result, um, now I get to talk about how Justin, me, is so so special because I normally organize these community uh, coffee chats, which basically just means I just message everybody constantly saying, please show up, please show up, please show up. That, that That's my role in the community is just the, the nagger. So... That, that's me. Recently been focused on a lot of the, the compliance stuff in the Monero ecosystem, but uh, and of course, always dabbing a bit in the uh, Monero research lab uh, stuff too, so happy to answer any questions here, whether they're from you or and there's a few coming in the YouTube chat if you can see those too, Doug. Also, point out you're the producer of the number one movie in America, right? Yeah, that we could talk about that a little bit if you want. But, uh, you, you want to jump in? Who else does have one here? Really, who's, who's this new guy? Netric. Uh, can you hear me? Hey, how's it going? You want to introduce yourself? Yeah, so um, I came from, uh, I just, I was invited by, by Justin. Uh, I'm a monitor contributor for, I don't know, two years. Mostly are only on the uh, localization work group. Very cool. Um, yeah, I'm from Brazil, so um, I do the Brazilian Portuguese stuff. Nice. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. So I guess uh, in true Monero fashion, first question, it is the anniversary. I think we should all go around and uh, provide the date that you acquired your first Monero and exactly how much Monero you have. Fluffy Pony, you first. Um, yeah, so the date I first acquired Monero is uh, nobody's business, and the total amount I have is also no one's business. What's the yeah, right. of right. standpoint if you have to answer that question? What's that? What's the point of a privacy coin if you didn't need to like reveal all your details like on live on air? This is your address. Post your address so you can put it in the block explorer, please. Yeah, there we go. My address is four and then a bunch of other characters. That's 95 of them. You, you, you... Also, if anyone wants my Monero, my privacy is apparently at the bottom of the engine ocean. Your, your, your mics are yeah, a super underwater really muted type thing. It, yeah. Maybe that was just for me. He, he, he's, he's swimming down. He's trying to find his, uh, his teeth. Oh, uh, gotcha. But yeah, exactly. but you can read it out letter by letter when you find it and you're ready to go. Everyone's, everyone's going <laughs> 64. How, how long are those things? They're so big. They're so big. Um, I, I'm willing to, to sit, to answer your question, Doug, because unlike some people here, I have nothing to hide. Um, I I only own like ten Monero because uh, 
You're setting the standard, Doc. You're setting the standard, Diego. Uh, because uh, um, I have to eat. I get paid in Monero, so I have to sell my Monero so I can I can buy food and stuff. Um, I don't own much. I, I, I like to pretend that it makes me, like, a little bit more, like, it makes my bags less heavy. So when I make a, a Monero decision, it cannot be because I want the price to go higher. Because I know that you scrubs that have a ton of Monero, you're just trying to make your bags, uh, you're just, like, trying to raise the price so you can sell them and dump on all your people so uh i'm not like you guys i'm better i'm pure i'm different and i'm special or so my mother told me all right i didn't actually think anybody would answer but uh, thank you diego yeah i'll Just... give it i'll give it a oh. shot yeah i can neither confirm nor deny the size or species of monero fish hiding on the sea ice <laughs> Neither the rate of growth. Hmm. Hmm. Right. I'm not even sure I know what that means. Justin, do you want to do you want to give us the update on the movie? Oh, sure. So, to those who are not aware, uh, we launched a Monero movie last weekend, and uh, it was a bit of a I'll call it a hack uh, because obviously there aren't many people going to see the movies right now. Uh, for, for many reasons. So we sort of were looking at the box office numbers and we're like, they're like $2,000. Like, this is, this is not that much money in order to be the top box office. So uh, we launched a, a, basically a shipping of, of Daniel Kim's, uh, Dr. Daniel Kim's talk, where he talked at the C3. The videos uh, from those are on this this channel. And... We packaged it up in, a, in a, a little bit of a nicer fashion. We added really lovely credits to the end that recognized all the Monero contributors, and we called it a movie and a, a, a feature film documentary. And um, we're still going back and forth, but on one of the main uh, box office reporting sites, we were up as number one for about two hours, and we're hoping that we're able to negotiate with them to be up there permanently. But uh, it, it, it's it was a it was about a week of just really. Uh, really interesting efforts from people that were interested in seeing this happen. A lot of graphic designers, a lot of other contributors that were working to make this what it is. So uh, it, was, it was interesting to see. And, and the movie really only has two purposes, right? The, the movie has the purpose of showing the strength of the Monero community and that, hey, we're a strong group of people here that can make the number one movie in America, right? And, and get this thing done. And then two is... Let's support some local theaters at this time. So we are passing along all the proceeds, uh, as we mentioned in the movie, to local theaters, in, independent theaters. So it, it, none of the individuals are going to take any money out of this. It's, it's all going to the theaters. So, um, yeah, just some random fun side project that, that we've been working on the past few weeks. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was a cool idea. So you actually were listed as, as number two for... Some time you're saying? I mean, for but for like two hours we were number one, and then they took us down as they're like, <laughs> we're gonna redo some of the UI elements in these, add a few more asterisks to your name essentially because of the circumstances. Um, so we're, we're 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 sort of seeing how that'll go before we uh, make you know make it wider in the press or anything. But uh, if you're if you're one of the 76 people watching right now, then you you know Monero Movie is very successful. Um, so so, yeah. so, I am going to have to split here pretty soon, Doug. I I was wondering if I could give my little funny update uh, about something I've been up to and of answer course. any questions or take any feedback for that. And then I will, uh, I will head out and grab some things because Justin does not want me to miss the meme competition. So um, stealing the show here for just a bit uh the thing that i've been working on the past few whiles is the mrl fund we discussed this at our last community meeting for those of you who don't know what that is well lucky that you're here because i'm about to explain it um it has come to the attention of the core team that the our MRL researchers have, and this has been known for quite some time, if anyone has discussed these types of things with our MRL researchers, um, funding them every quarter via the CCS has been stressful on them. There's been 
um, you know, times when the price has catastrophically dropped after we have raised the funds for them. So what they end up getting paid out is actually not quite what we raised. Um, they try their best to uh, both not to charge, you know, competitive prices while still keeping in mind that we're a open source software project that relies on donations. Um, and we want to make sure they're well, well taken care of, but also, you know, having to put this proposal in every three months and have hope that it gets funded, you know, it's just not great for job security. And for many of us, we believe that MRL is the backbone of a lot of the things that we do in Monero without their research. You know, a lot of what we do just kind of falls flat on its face, it's, which is really sad. So um, recently I have been trying to put together a another fund type thing right now we currently have two we have the general fund we have the ccs fund um if you go to ccs.getmonero.org if you don't know what that is it's how we fundraise for different proposals and projects that people want to do and that's the way mrl is currently getting funded but there is a third fund in the works that is to be released by the core team sometime soon it's the mrl fund and this is just a continuously open fund similar to the general fund where anyone can donate however much they want at any point that they want and the goal is that every month we'd be able to take the us dollar equivalent of the salaries of these uh, researchers and pay it out to these guys and so what that does is that reduces um, they don't have to fundraise anymore. That's going to reduce volatility for them in the sense that now they don't have to get paid three months all the way up at front to try to reduce volatility on their own. We can try, try to make things a little bit more stable and comfortable for them because they are, let, let's be honest, working for Monero is a big risk. Um, it, especially getting paid in Monero to work on Monero, is, is, it's a big risk. Um, some people might be more comfortable with that risk than others. There is going to be stipulations to receive the MRL funds. So it's not just going to be like, oh, you people are grandfathered in and the core team decides this way, that way, who gets the money and who doesn't. Um, I'm currently drafting up the the criteria and the guidelines to make some uh, to how somebody would receive such funds. And it's not going to be limited to just the researchers that are currently uh, getting paid uh, to work on Monero. Um, I will be released. Like, I'm working with a couple members of the core team to try to get this uh, cleaned up. I've already got some feedback from them, so I'm going to be refining it a little bit. This is going to be released to the community sometime soon. And this is something that I really, really, really hope that we can just get the community to just throw a bunch of money at because MRL, like I said, is just, man, without them, <laughs> We can't be making all of these really big steps forward like we have been, like with Bulletproofs, um, CL SAG, uh, Triptych, or this new Archer something, something or other that uh, we just learned about in the quiz not too long ago. So that is coming up very soon. I hope to release details before the end of this month. Um, to those of you core team members that are either uh, here watching, um, I do Oh, no, I sent it to Luigi in binary face. I don't think I said this. Arctic Mighty Fluffy Pony. <laughs> I was going to poke you guys and say, please look at my message. But uh, I didn't send you a message. So um, I'll send that to you very soon after I implement the feedback I got from, from the two that I did send it to. Um, yes, I want to do a really big advertising push for this once it comes out. I want us to fill it to the brim with tons and tons of money so our MRL people are secure and ready to go. Um, for a long time coming. So that's my big coffee chat update that's coming up here fairly soon. Um, if there's any questions, I can take those at the moment, but I don't suppose there would be. I think, I think it's very cool. I mean, what's, are you getting feedback? What, what What's the general feedback we're getting from the approach? Um, so I'm, uh, you may disagree with my approach on this, but I am getting feedback from the core team and I'm getting, Feedback from the public, as I, I, well, I've put out feelers to the public. I'm not sharing with them the things that I have set because I don't want them to look at the things that I've done and say, yes, this, no, this necessarily. I'm looking for new ideas. So if you do have some ideas in terms of what would you like to see an MRL funded researcher have to do to be able to receive this money? Is it reports it every X amount of time? Is it, uh, you know, you want this person to be able to have be able to prove this that or the other thing um if you do have ideas please you can let me know those things but at the moment i'm keeping things pretty tightly under wraps and depending on what the core team thinks uh it may or may not be open for public comment before it is released as is similar to the general fund in the ccs in this case 
Arctic, Arctic mine, I'd be curious to hear what, what your opinion is on this. Um, the main idea behind this kind of thing is to stabilize the currency risk. And, and the issue that we're dealing with is you, you do a fundraising, it takes maybe three weeks or four weeks to, to get that funds in place. Then the currency moves one way or the other. And then you end up with the uh, researcher having to take a currency risk that they are either not prepared to or unable to take. And that's fundamentally the problem with, with this year. So you want to find a way to do that. And yeah, I mean, the idea of having a stable fund that can absorb these fluctuations in currency between XMR and USD um, will then provide the stability to provide the researchers with a stable income in terms of USD, if that is the desire of, of a particular researcher. And for a lot of people, I mean, you know, they're highly leveraged. Effectively, you're highly leveraged as an individual, and you might spend 90% or 95% of the money you earn, and their expenses are going to be in, in, in US dollars in this particular example. Uh, Diego's example prior was a very good example. So you can't really afford the currency risk to pay your rent or to pay your mortgage and so on. And that's the idea. And, and it also should be noted that this does not necessarily mean that if a researcher wants to use the CCS because they're willing to take that risk with Monero, they're willing to kind of gamble a little bit with Monero in terms of it going up or down. A researcher can still go that route if they want to. The MRL fund is not going to be the only definitive way for a person to receive funds. Uh, the CCS is available to them. Volunteering is available to them. Uh, we have other people like the Nonsense Research Lab, like Isthmus, who are not funded by anything Monero at all. They have their own separate thing that they're doing, but they work closely with Monero. Uh, with the Monero Research Lab. So this is just supposed to be something particularly aimed at those who do consistent, ongoing work for Monero uh, on an hourly time-based basis rather than kind of a project-based type thing. Uh, some Another offering for them to be able to take advantage of to have some stability. Okay, cool. but, Ricardo, you still there? Yeah, uh, but, but, but yeah. Sorry. Uh, but they don't have to take it. I mean, they can take some risk if they want. They can hold some Monero if they want. It. Nobody's forcing them to take this. It is a way of stabilizing that risk. Ricardo, where do you see this going uh, with how Monero is currently funded, um, the development? Do you see it evolving into something different, or it's going to be like this for quite some time? Um, so, I mean, look, we're pretty far away, I think, from um, like Monero being a unit of account because of, of the volatility. And, and to be honest, like, I think it, I think we like the volatility for now. We're early adopters. We're risk takers. The volatility plays into um, our model of how we use Monero. But obviously, the, you know, you take an MRL contributor um, like Saray or Sarang, um, for, for those that don't know, uh, the way that Saray and Sarang got involved with Monero was I approached Saray, I found him on Reddit. Um, he was offering to do people's maths homework. And I said to him, um, oh, hey, I have this white paper that um, is pretty complex and it would be great to have some annotations. Would it, is that something you'd be willing to do? And he was like, sure. And I paid him his hourly rate, which... He was in university at the time and he was like can i get my friend who's like more into cryptography who's also a mathematician to look at this white paper too and i was like great and man that must have been like like may or june 2014. Um, it was really early on might even have been april and uh, subsequent to that then um you know they they enjoyed it they got in, uh, more involved um the core team uh, paid them to be involved uh just you know, paid them the hourly rates. It was like a side hustle whilst they were studying. And when they finally graduated, then they got involved with Monero full time um, on a on a voluntary basis, uh, but paid for by the CCS, which is a crowdfunding system, right? So it's it's inherently risky. And I think if you if you consider where they are, um, the fact that they now are published, the fact that they are respected in the community and in the broader ecosystem. They could very easily go get a job at Consensus or at you know one of the the, uh, the the research outfits. They could get a job working on a scam coin. They could easily you know, uh, and that's just within the ecosystem. If they really wanted to, they could go get a job 
at a university or at the NSA or wherever. But they work on Monero because they're ideologically motivated to do so. And I think it behooves all of us and everyone in the community to consider that, that these are not people who, are, who have jobs and are doing this on the side. This is their job. This is what they do to pay the bills. And if this MRL slush fund um, is a way for us to uh, ensure that there's no slippage, um, and maybe what it involves into is some sort of fund that covers, uh, you know, they still use the CCS, and then this is a fund to cover losses or to cover, you know, um, uh, currency fluctuations. So that's certainly like like a way that it could evolve, um, or it could just be the way that they get paid. And I think that either way um, is a win because what we really want is for them to have a reliable, solid income um, on a monthly basis that they can take to the bank when they when they decide they want to buy a home or a car or a waffle iron and go, I need a loan for this very expensive waffle iron, and here's the proof of my earnings. Um, which right now is very difficult for them as well. So it's it's really, the, the onus is on us. We've, we've employed them as a community and we've got to come to the table. Do, do you guys think there's more we can do as a community to help um, basically get people to donate more to kind of, you know, embed that more into the culture or is there something, I don't know, like, I don't know if you guys, are, I'm sure you're familiar with PBS, um, you know, they, they have their, you know, annual fundraisers where they try to get the word out and, you know, they're, they're funded by the people that watch them. So, you know, similar to, to what we have going on here. Uh, do you envision that being a thing maybe we could do in the future? Just kind of like these, uh, these drives to, to raise money for the developers? I don't know if anybody has an opinion there. Uh, yeah. So uh, for funding the developers, like... <clears throat> I'm sorry. Give me, give me one second. I, 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 what's that? I lost my train of thought. Give me one second. Um, I can jump in, uh, and then you can jump back when you're ready. Um, so, so my opinion on this is, uh, yeah, there's certainly other ways of of funding, and I think that um, Tari Labs has has got some ideas around that, and uh, that that will hopefully be able to bring bring to bear. Um, but moreover, I, th I think the, um, you know, there, there are lots of ways of, of uh, supporting the Monero ecosystem. But one thing that we definitely are lacking at the moment is that sort of um, funding, the corporate style funding, you know, like I I'm, a, I'm a company, I make money from Monero's existence, and this is how I, I pay it back. And we see that a little bit in the in the Bitcoin ecosystem with um, with Chain Code Labs, Blockstream, um, Square, uh, uh, a few others, who support um, either individual developers or you know uh, support groups of developers or even partially support developers. I'd like to see a little bit more of that, and I know that it's tight at the moment, um, especially with COVID nineteen. There are a lot of companies that are are struggling. Uh, they have overheads that they, you know, they still have to pay. But uh, like maybe if a group of companies got together, you know, like, well, we're an exchange and we're a whatever and we're another company. We benefit from from Monero's existence and we're all willing to put to each company is going to put two thousand dollars down every month. And then together, that's six grand a month that pays for a developer. Um, you know, there's things like that. And I'd like to see more of that. Very cool. Need money? You um, want to jump in? Uh, yeah. So, uh, what I what I wanted to say before uh, was that in it's much. E oh, I think we're losing them. Arctic mine. Okay. Yeah. Um, what I was going to say is that it, I also think we need to diversify source of funding, and and I think just to follow up on what Ricardo said. Um, we need to have multiple sources of funding. And the idea, I think, behind this kind of thing is ultimately, this, uh, for example, for a fund like this uh, CCS fund, the source of funds may well be exactly the same as what we're doing through the community um, contribution system right now. But the difference is, is that we have a stabilizing fund that can be used to deal with these fluctuations in currency. Uh, and so that it takes that fluctuation outside of and that risk 
outside of the actual developer or the actual contributor. And I think that's really the, 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 the question, the key in the case of the MRL. I mean, they need to know they get a certain amount of USD every month. And we need to stabilize it. And that's just a tool to do just that. Um, and that's the basic concept. And, and one of the ideas about a fund like that is you, you do want to build the fund up in good times so that when the market goes down or uh, when things are under subtractive, you have that, that cushion to to actually um, deal with that downside. So that's the concept, too, also in, in a fund like that. But I, I got, yeah, the basic concept is to take that risk out of those uh, researchers in, 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 in particular. And a lot depends on the person. Some can take the risk, some cannot. I think the money wants to get in. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you covered part of what I was getting at, which is uh, our system for crowdfunding is currently designed uh, for a model where uh, the funding comes in at points in time where we're uncertain uh, uh, of what the future outlook is going to be. Um, so Ah, keep losing you, Doug. Uh, I'll, I'll message him and see if I can find like some recommendations to improve his yeah. uh, connection. H H Y C. I mean, you just okay. uh, yeah, I, I just turned off my video. I just turned off my video. Is this on? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, you're there. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Um. So. The, the funding model really needs uh, to be able to uh, accommodate for the ability to have uh, funding that it can be provided during the boom times and uh, can be relied on during the bust times. And right now it's it's very bursty. Uh, so the, the idea that we have a fund where we can have people donate to it and it has a percentage liquidated into dollars so that it's able to have a, a, a relatively stable rate during the bus times is a, a very sane idea. I quite like it. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm, I'm very for the idea of the slush fund. Howard, you, you've obviously okay. put a ton of work into it. So you guys. Okay. Thanks, Diego. <laughs> Great topic, yep. by the way. Thanks. Yeah. Um, Howard, you put a ton of work into Monero. Uh, most recently, most recently, random X. Um, I don't even know if you, if you, I think you ended up putting a funding request, I think even uh, after you did the work, what's, what's your opinion on it? Why, I guess what motivates you to work on Monero and, and how, how do you see this whole funding uh, ecosystem working? Well, 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 let me take the smaller question first. I think <clears throat> one of the things that would help for the volatility is, you know, if, if we're just doing gradual payments, like on a weekly basis, you know, if, if a project is slated to run for two months or six months or however long, you know, don't, don't do big lump sum payments. And that, that'll help with the short term volatility right there. Um, yeah, for, for random X, we, uh, we never actually went beyond, you know, if you feel like donating, you know, we're happy to accept your donations. I, I actually got, uh, 1.5 XMR out of that. <laughs> really? Yeah. So yeah, there, there's a disconnect there. I mean, uh, something needs to change. If well, so so what motivates well, you then? So you're, you're obviously not making a lot of money off this, if, if any. So what what keeps somebody like you uh, working on the working on this project? Well, see, I mean, okay, I've I've been doing open source software since the 1980s. All right, so. Um, Getting paid a large sum of money has never been a motivator for me. The only thing that motivates me is interesting work. And there's a lot of interesting work in there. <laughs> so, so I, you know, that, that's really it. Um, you know, and, and, you know, I've had my own software company now since 1999. So this is now our 21st year in existence. And um, I actually have not given myself a raise in past 18 years i mean i've got a comfortable income and i do everything that i feel like doing in life so i'm not looking to make more money i'm just no, i'm just looking for what's interesting i do think that's an amazing quality of monero it seems to you know filter out people that uh you know are motivated by just by money it's it's really about people that are passionate about an idea it seems to attract those types of people 
which is obviously, I think, working in our favor here. <laughs> so uh, actually, let's talk about RandomX a little bit. So there's been some recent news that, um, what is it? Which uh, phone company is it? Uh, oh, HTC. HTC, right? HTC uh, has a phone that's going to be mining uh, Monero on it. Um, what's your opinion there? Is that is that that's something obviously you foresaw with the invention of RandomX? Yeah, you know that was one of my big hopes was that you know the <clears throat> the mobile phone manufacturers would latch onto it because obviously you know mobile phones are the most ubiquitous general computing device in the world right now. Everybody has at least one. I mean, a lot of people walk around with two or three. Um, uh, and I think it was great that HTC was the one making the announcement. You know, they're the number one manufacturer out of Taiwan. And, you know, Taiwan is a huge electronic semiconductor powerhouse. So for HTC to be making this announcement was fantastic. I mean, it just, um, it shows that we are on the radar of the companies that matter, you know, the mobile phone manufacturers. So, yeah, I, I thought that was terrific. And what is the business? Is the it's, model it's that a huge value. is the model that they're gonna uh, take the money, or the customer that you know, owns the phone uh, gets gets the mining rewards? Well, as far as I can see, you know, the customer just installs a mining app, so I would assume the customer gets the funds. Yeah. So then, what do you think um, motivates the you know the phone company at that point? What what was their motivating factor to do it? <laughs> just a marketing uh gimmick i suppose because you know okay um realistically you know i mean htc five or six years ago was like the number two or number three phone manufacturer in the world but uh over the past couple of years their market share has slid down to <laughs> nearly you know less than one percent so they, they've fallen on hard times and they're looking for something to rebuild their brand and rebuild the, the sizzle behind their brand. So um, cryptocurrency is obviously a way to get more attention. You know, as Samsung has done this as well, right? They've, they've released a phone that says uh, it'll be Bitcoin full note or something. So obviously there, there's more of a marketing spin to this, I think, than any practical edge because obviously any mobile phone in the world can download a miner app and run it so there's there's nothing you know if, if you peel back all the market players there's nothing really unique about what they're talking about so where, where do you ultimately see this trend going is it a trend or is this just kind of like uh you know maybe a little fad and it won't actually pan out in, into being something well okay uh I'm going to believe for now that it's the start of a trend. You know, a, a large corporation like HTC doesn't put their name on a marketing effort if they don't believe it's got some legs. You know, so this isn't just going to die out overnight. It's going to it's going to carry on for a little while. It's going to carry on for at least three or six months because you know these companies plan their marketing spins, you know, multiple quarters in advance. So they've already done a market analysis and said, hey, this could pay off for us at least three or six months down the line. VT, uh, VT Nerd, do you have any opinion there on, on RandomX and what we're seeing and how we're seeing it play out? Are you, are you a fan of this potential yeah. trend? Um, yeah, kind of. I mean, it, I think the one interesting thing was the... I mean, these cell phones are going to have such little processing power, but it'll be kind of interesting. I don't know. I, I really don't have any other thoughts on it other than to say that, um, you know, I ran RandomX here locally for all the reasons that most people in the Monero community do. And so, I mean, on the cell phones, the efficiency will be pretty interesting, but the, you know, the amount of throughput won't be all that interesting. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, would, I, I guess I don't really know HTC's true motivation. It's probably just more of a marketing gimmick than anything that they expect any big returns on, meaning that they'll just expect to get more sales than any money out of these out of the mining. And I don't know how much my, uh, like actual mining throughput you can do on these things. But um, 
Yeah, it'll be interesting to see like what kind of perform. I'm really more interested to see like what kind of performance these phones actually get, and how like the, what's the battery draw. Like, I would be really interested to see like how quickly you just tank your battery. But yeah, but so I'm more interested, I guess, the technical how this actually works. Ricardo, a few things. Uh, yeah. you, you have any you have any opinion on on random X? Uh, I I don't think are you he's there. Yeah, yeah, I don't know um, if. Uh, I think originally you weren't necessarily the biggest proponent of random X, but now that it's been implemented and it seems to be working, what's your, what's your current take on it? I think, look, I, it's, um, it's certainly an interesting, an interesting thing. And I, I was not against random X, um, uh, against implementing random X. I just feel, and I'm still of the opinion that we are staving off, um and inevitability um and i don't know how long we're going to stave it off for uh i think partly we don't know where general purpose computing is going to go um there's certainly some interesting things being done in that space but i i think that you know if if monero's market cap increases um tenfold then it certainly becomes more attractive to to try and um uh, outcompete your your neighboring mining farm in whatever way you can, and you know gain whatever edge you can. And I don't know what that ends up looking like. You know, maybe it ends up looking like purpose built motherboards to house twenty four CPUs that are just mining random X. Um, either way, I do think that there's that that some form of ASIC is an is an inevitability. Uh, maybe not ASICs like we see with Bitcoin. Because you know, SHA two is such a, an easy algorithm to to ASIC, relatively speaking. Um, but yeah, it's it's. I think it's certainly interesting to see what uh, what stuff or what HTC are doing, and I'm kind of keen on seeing like WebAssembly implementations of RandomX and maybe the whole like website mining thing is revisited. Who knows? It's interesting times either way. Very cool. Um, so, what does everybody think the greatest uh, uh, Monero's greatest achievement was this year? I'm, I'm going to go ahead and actually say Random X. Uh, what, what does everybody else think? Whoever wants to jump in, Doug, you want to jump in? Need money? Monero's greatest. Yeah, no, achievement. definitely, definitely Random X. Like that's that is for sure. Like that, that's kind of redefined proof of work if it does manage to pan out. I know. Fluffy is skeptical here on uh, its its ability to resist tailor made devices that can eck out every last percentage of hash rate. Uh, but in terms of being able to uh, compete within an order of magnitude or closer, I I do think that I mean this has a serious shot at competing. It, it, I can see motherboards that are running, say, 24 CPUs or purpose-built things that are able to get, you know, 10% incremental improvements. But from, from the perspective of stuff like mobile phone CPUs, they're designed to run cycles on minimal amounts of joule usage. Whereas if you want to run a commercial operation, you want to overclock, which you, you start having to actually expend more joules per hash. So... If if we see large scale adoption of uh, random X on cutting edge mobile phone CPUs, I think we could actually see something very significant happen. Um, they it's it's I don't think that that would happen as an actual commercial operation because the uh, the cost that it would take to recoup it would be insane relative to the cost of this EU, uh, but. I think the bigger point is that it probably wouldn't be unprofitable, or if it was, barely, barely so. So that 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 opens up some very interesting avenues in my mind. VT uh, nerd, you want to jump in there? Yeah, I was just sort of going to echo. I, I guess I didn't realize that was up for discussion, but yeah, sort of echo what Fluffy was saying, and that I'm not sure how how this is going to look like long term especially if some of these cpu manufacturers begin building i mean it's a pretty big investment but they could almost theoretically build like custom cpus with bits removed from a normal cpu to save on power there's all kind of stuff like that that gets really really hairy about 
what and i mean i think for the most part random x would have served its purpose it's just that i think a lot of people think that they're going to get money at home by mining and that might not always be the case so it may be the case that we have to stick with random x and maybe it is the most decentralized thing but people may be uh disappoint disappointed to know that like there's going to be always be bigger players i guess and i don't know if the whole community really has wrapped their head around that quite yet um Arctic mining yeah, I, I, in, uh, yeah um, I, I have a bit of a different comment on this whole mining question the first question that comes to my mind is everybody talks about the cost of the electricity and the cost of the hardware nobody talks about the heat that's produced is this thing a valuable commodity or is it a, uh, something to get rid of and also don't look at the fact that electricity costs are very different depending on the circumstances the time of day where you have a, a localized surplus or or, or or scarcity and that is the kind of thing that can lead to diversification i mean i guess i came up with the term arctic mine originally because i was freezing cold and i would heat my hands by using the heat from mining bitcoin and minus i have to be outside in minus 30 weather and my point is, if, if it's minus 40 outside Celsius, and it's the same thing, Fahrenheit, or if it's plus 40, like 100 and whatever Fahrenheit, there's quite a difference in economics when it comes to mining. So that's the thing that I, that I start off with. And there are two areas where mining, and something like random acts are very beneficial. And the first thing is you can actually, as a homeowner, for example, make money by essentially saving on heating costs in the winter and mining instead of burning gas or, or electricity in a resistor. The other one is that you also have localized the surpluses of solar energy, which actually lend themselves a lot to mining. And so you, when you're talking, you know, a hundredfold difference in efficiency between an ASIC and a CPU, then the ASIC wins. But the minute you start talking about two times or, or one and a half times the efficiency difference, all these localized differentials are going to become dominant. And I'm far from convinced that, you know, sure, I mean, I may be, um, 30, uh, 70% as efficient as the ASIC, but my effective cost of electricity may be like 5%. And that's my point that, and that you have to look at all, the whole ecosystem. I don't think you can just look at, at the processes. And the other thing to bear in mind is, is mining generally looks for cheap electricity or cheap heat dumps. And I, and I think random X grades because it's CPU based, in order to beat them, in order to beat the big centralized ASIC, you do not need to beat them just on efficiency. You can beat them on all these other economic factors that they not, may not be able to have in a large scale operation. So that's kind of my point. I think it does favor the little guy because of all these externalities. Justin, you want to jump in there, and then we'll go back to Howard, and he, maybe he can wrap it up, wrap up that topic. Yeah. So, so I mean, I, I, I want to add to the externalities portion. I, I mean, I like Ricardo, think that having a, a tailor-made algorithm is not enough to prevent ASICs from being on the network at all. But I think that if it's within a certain magnitude, it doesn't really matter. And there are several reasons for that. Um, I, I know there are many people that say, like, all those externalities that Arctic Mind brought up will probably be additive in the sake of people that are focusing on efficiency will pursue as many of those as possible. And although I, I completely agree that will be the case and we need to factor those in, I think just the fact that when you make ASICs, it has no other use or it doesn't have as easy of a resale use. So you're losing the option of selling it. That is a pretty substantial economic benefit in terms of the volatility of cryptocurrencies. They're volatile what would be profitable to mine today or what might look on paper today to be a really profitable mining, uh, you know, warehouse to make in, in implementation in a month time does not mean it will be once you actually get it out up and running because the price is all over the place. So just having the ability to resell hardware to significantly reduce your downfall or your, your downfall risk is a valuable component. And it's very difficult for ASIC manufacturers to compete with that specific component. So I think when you include that financial component, it, it makes things even more, like it, it means you can be within relative orders of magnitude and still be, have, have an algorithm that is reasonably competitive for quite a few market, but there's, oh, sorry, market participants. 
Howard, do you want to wrap up on the uh, random X topic? Uh, sure. You know, um, I've I gotta agree with Arctic Mine. You know, there's there's a larger ecosystem at work, so the factors that we can identify are only a small part of that. Um, the thing about you know, of course, it will be possible for somebody to build a dedicated motherboard with, you know, 24, 64 CPUs on it. Uh, but there are limits to that. You know, there, there's a difficulty in removing heat from those chips so that they don't burn themselves up. And if somebody was to solve that, all of the high performance computing world, all of the you know, high density hyperscaling data center world, they would jump on that. Right. So. Everything that you need to do to build an ASIC for random X that will outperform the off the shelf CPUs is going to be a giant leap forward for general purpose computing. So, you know, I don't think they can ever get ahead of the game. They can advance the game, but they will advance it for everybody. Very cool. So this question started as what what do people see as being Monero's greatest achievement this year? So I guess we all kind of agree random X or does anybody have anything else they want to bring up in terms of uh, Monero's greatest achievement for this anniversary? Yeah, um, I like to say that there has been a steady systematic improvement in efficiency, uh, largely resulting from the work of the MRL. And that is not, it's incremental, but it has a direct impact. And uh, I kind of see that firsthand because I get to set the figure out what the fees are going to be once the product comes out, once C Slack comes out, or one, you know, the, the result of this, all this work comes out. And, and what I have seen is it's not like a one year efficiency, but it's this ongoing systematic improvements in efficiency that are adding up ever so slowly, but they are significant. And it means basically your transaction sizes are smaller, your verification times are faster, and yes, your fees in terms of XMR are smaller and for a given amount. And that, I think, is a, it's a really, it's not a, a, a specific achievement, but it's an ongoing achievement that is very, very significant over time. Very cool. Anybody else? So what what is what is everybody uh, you know wish or hopes that Monero will achieve uh, this year? Is there anything on people's wish list here as to what they hope Monero I, will achieve? I'd like a GUI. <laughs> I want a GUI for my GUI. Um, no, I, I have one uh, quick. Uh, I have a, a, a topic I'd like to bring up. So uh, Ricardo can jump in here in a bit if, if he's interested in adding to this also. But at the Monero Confranco, Ricardo announced that Tari was working on a legal white paper for exchanges to have better assurance when they're adding Monero. And I can announce at this point that the white paper itself is in the completed state and it has not just been an effort of tari they have reached out to a substantial number of you know pretty prestigious uh companies and other ecosystem components so they like it's not just a it's not just tari saying this is what a law firm is saying it's tari working with the law firm but it's very prestigious and well connected and also it has turned into sort of the view of a substantial portion of the cryptocurrency ecosystem. So that white paper is actually finished at this point. It will go into a review journal at a certain point that that's still in process. And there will, in my opinion, what I'm most interested in as someone who works in cryptocurrency compliance and has actually talked to all these people all the time, like it's kind of a running joke. Every single time a company comes to speak with our us as a market making firm, they know they're gonna get asked a question when Monero, because we just keep asking it every single time. Like it's sort of a running joke in our office. So um, after speaking with all these people that are in compliance with the exchanges, I think all the like additional materials that are specifically designed, that are like derived from the white paper, not necessarily even the white paper itself, but all the extra materials will help regulators, help compliance officers. And I think it will help everyone um, adopt privacy coins in general, not even just Monero, though, of course, 
a, a main motivating factor for the white paper was so that Monero was more represented in, in these talks and, and privacy coins as a whole. So that that's one major update I get to share is that um, there has there's a substantial amount of work that has gone into this, uh, more than we probably all expected. But uh, we're at a state now where we're able to continue pushing forward mo more on the uh, release of the paper piece. Yeah. And, and I think just to add to that, um, uh, you know, it really has blossomed into a much bigger deal and, and much bigger affair than I expected. Um, and it's become a lot more generalized uh, and, and not as Monero specific as it was in the beginning, because we realized, I think, as we went through it, that a lot of these are more general things, you know, like um, the some of the issues that are coming up, like could even apply to Bitcoin. You know, it's not it's not just like. Oh, this is, you know, no one's saying like we won't list Monero because you, we don't like ring signatures. Like, you know, the, the, the issues that they have are more generic than that. So, yeah, and much to my great dismay, as Justin pointed out, it does help other privacy coins. So if anyone from the Verge community is watching, well, it's our pleasure. So, so what's uh, what's your opinion on as, as to whether or not I could anonymously accept Monero for my uh, campaign donations for running for U.S. Congress? Uh, I'm not touching that one with ten foot pole. You, 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 you can do that one yourself. You might have to put me in touch. Yeah, you should do. You this should is do some legal advice, but it's a great <laughs> idea. What's that? <laughs> you should do this thing when you like get a lawyer and ask them. <laughs> Not a little bit, but I think you just told me to get a lawyer, which yes. Um, all right, guys, that, that's really all my questions. Uh, yes. Sadly, the white paper does not cover anonymous campaign donations with Monero. We we did not think to cover that in, in the majority scope of, of the paper itself. I mean, I mean, the FEC allows uh, allows you to. Uh, collect donations in cash under $50 uh, anonymously. So there, there is a little bit of uh, potentially a tie in there with Monero. I don't, I don't know how far I want to, I want to test those limits. Um, um, <laughs> I wouldn't mind commenting on this one, uh, but there's a difference between privacy and anonymous. There are people that may need for regulatory reasons to know who that person is. It doesn't mean the whole world has to know. Uh, and I think those distinctions are, are, are a legal regulatory question. For example, they need to know that the person is a U.S. citizen and they need to know a U.S. resident and that it meets certain requirements. I mean, all the specific laws in the United States. But those that need to know need to know, but it doesn't mean the whole world needs to know. Mm -hmm. And that's the distinction between privacy and anonymity. Yes. I mean, I, I, so I, I think I, that's where I would go on the subject. I launched uh, our Roger Ver video today, and in that video, I kind of re-announced that I'm running for Congress and asked for donations for the first time. And I, I was trying to make that decision as to whether or not I would put, uh, you know, just a Monero QR code up there for people to donate uh, with asking, it, you know, telling them as long as it's less than fifty dollars. Uh, and I left it on the video, but then I, I took it off other parts. So I'm not too sure what I'm going to be doing there. But I would like to explore that. I mean, me personally, from from a policy standpoint. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, money is speech and, uh, the, the greatest form of, or the, the form of free speech that we most have to protect is really political speech. And there's nothing more, uh, political, uh, or there's nothing more in terms of expressing, you know, your policies than, uh, your politics than donating to a campaign. So, I mean, that is like true, uh, true free speech there. So I, un I understand why we want to know where the money is coming from. But then, uh, you know, fundamentally, uh, I don't know. What, what do you guys think about that? What do you guys think about this idea of, you know, ideally allowing people to anonymously donate to campaigns? Yeah. Arctic Mine already addressed it. You know, you have to be a U.S. citizen, so you you do have to know to some extent where did the money come from. That there's there's no getting around that. Yeah, but just just ignoring ignoring the rules for a minute, just kind of on a on a philosophical level, 
what do you think of this idea of, you know, free speech? I should be able to uh, express myself, especially in terms of, you know, political free speech. I, I think that's a very political question. <laughs> While I, I do think you could do it and it would align with your personal beliefs, I think it would also raise some uncomfortable questions to answer in the future uh, about your, uh, I, I, I don't know, affiliations slash biases. Like what? Maybe maybe you got a lot of donations in Monero, and therefore you're beholden to the community, or I don't know. Like the, mm -hmm. it could it could be bad. You have free speech, but you have to live uh -huh. with the consequences of that speech, I guess. I just I don't want to jump in here really quick and say that mm -hmm. we have maybe a minute on this topic before I jump into the Monero meme competition. So if you are participating in the Monero meme competition, you're watching, but you're not in the chat yet go ahead and jump in the chat right now all right i think yeah this is good i think we wrap up here just just one more thing you know like citizens united made money equal to free speech but but i believe you know that decision was wrong and um it it, it could very well be reversed if you know if we get a progressive government in the next election um you know the the problem with money equals free speech is that it it takes away from one man one vote and it, it becomes whoever has the most money has the most votes and that you know that's definitely not democratic i'll leave that mm -hmm. i mean i i think that the, the flip side argument that there is you know there might be people you know a minority that you want to protect that wants to uh you know donate for a political cause uh, and they they only feel comfortable doing so anonymously. So, you know, a big part of, you know, our, our representative democracy is kind of always protecting that minority opinion uh, in political speech. And I think there's arguments to make that anonymous donations uh, foster that. I think would be the, maybe a, a counter argument to that. 